Okay, following on from the last video of Ubuntu VN, which uses the Cinnamon desktop by default, check in the comments. Someone mentioned that there is a deep in version, and they are correct. I checked their website, and they do indeed have a deep in version. So, we're going to have a quick look at the deep in version as well. From what I can see, it uses the latest version of the deep in desktop, which is version 20, which is still in beta. I do believe, don't quote me on that, I'm pretty sure it's still in beta. In fact, I think it is, yeah. Um, so we're going to have a quick run through of this one. Again, I'm not too knowledgeable on this desktop sort of distribution whatsoever. So we're going to just sort of go through it and sort of fumble our way through it together. So by default, it selects this language here, but we're going to go for English. Um, we haven't read or we don't really agree to it, but we're going to go for it anyway. So we're going to click Next. Okay, so what disks what? So I'm going to go for this one because it seems that there's nothing on it and hopefully I don't nuke one of my drives that's currently in use. So again, it uses the sort of quite strange partition layout that Deepin uses with multiple partitions and one's got recovery of 10 gig, one's got a swap of 16, one's mounted at data at 54 gig, okay. One's root B at 15 gig, then we've got a 15 gig EXT4 and we've got a boot of 2 gig ext4 and then we have a boot ef5 300 megabytes so it's very strange partition layout and you can't use anything under 64 gig on this one so let's go for start installation so that's going to do all of that to our partitions now and let's click continue right as far as i'm aware we'll do our user accounts and stuff when we log back in so i'm going to pause the video now but i'm just going to make a track of the time so we know how long this installation took so the time is 1.58 a.m. I think this is the latest I've actually ever recorded a video. So I'm going to pause the video now, and then when we come back, just before we reboot, we'll do a little time check and see how long it all took. Okay, so the first part of the installation is done, and it's now 2.04. So that's about six minutes it's taken to get through to this part. Once we reboot, though, we all have to do our sort of user accounts and probably choose language and stuff because i don't think we did that then did we so i'm going to pause the video now and then once i'm done we'll be booting off disk okay so we just had a login screen now so we'll just type in our password there we go right i just need to mirror the displays because it hasn't done it for us let's go into the settings uh, where is it on deep in? I always forget. Oh, there's a little cog right there for us. Right, bear with me. Okay, cool. So we can see the same thing now. And as you can see, it's the standard sort of deep in 20 setup with a panel at the bottom and it's currently in efficient mode. Nope, fashion mode, sorry, where you get the rounded corners and there's like gaps between the um, screen edges there. Before we have a look at everything though, we're going to run an update. So let's get into a terminal. Huh, showing the password. Fortunately, we don't use any. I'll tell you what, why is it showing the password? Do you know what? I think it's to do with this. This was confusing me in the first video. Let me try, try and press English US a minute. Let me do that again. Ah, there we go. So now we've hidden the characters. So we, uh, sort of that confused me in the first video of the last one we just did. But fortunately, we know what that's all about now. We've just got a notification for package cache has been wiped. Let's type in our password to run the update. Okay, and let's quickly see what repos it is updating from. So it's got the Google repo there again for Chrome. So Chrome is our default web browser, like the Ubuntu VN Cinnamon one that we last looked at. And then we have the community packages dot deep in slash deep in apricot repos okay so has it found anything it did so we just installed a new package which is the deep in user experience daemon and then we upgraded dde control center and google chrome stable okay so let's have a look at how they've done this taskbar here so this is the deep in taskbar or panel whatever you want to call it you have your recycle bin there turn off button there got a clock there and if you click that i do believe you can change the um there you go so you can change it to 24 and 12 hour and you can also get into the time there so it's not actually 3 a.m it's only 2 a.m so i think the time's a bit different there 
why has it got the wrong time time settings let's bring that down to the correct time just so I know what I'm doing <laughs> type in our password right should be on the right time now there we go 208 and then what we have here is on board so I think that's the on screen keyboard it is indeed can we close that just by clicking it and then if you press that that will collapse and hide the icons that you've got there which will be notifications network sound removable drives and then that sort of language thing that we just clicked is that gone yeah and then in the middle you'll have some pinned applications and what they have here by default is google chrome the settings which is the control center music album and your file manager and then you have a little separator here with a multitasking window where you can add more desktops and then you also have a show desktop button there as well so let's have a look at what this thing comes installed with oh and also if you want to get a bigger menu you can get a full screen application launcher like so and you can also get categories to the left there and then you can just go through it like that so I'll tell you what we'll look through it like this so as I said the default web browser is Google Chrome some music I do believe this is deep in music file let's go into the about and that will let us know a bit more about it yep so this is deep in music so then in movie I'm gonna guess that's deep in movie yep so we've got deep in movie and you can change the theme by one by one for each of these deep in applications by just clicking that but we're going to leave it on the system theme because we're going to change the whole system theme and then hopefully that will have a cohesive look either dark or light so let's close these ones so we can either close this with exit or minimize to the tray we're going to go for a full exit there so we have screen capture so you can select a portion of your screen take a screenshot or record and then you can add annotations and text so let's get rid of that and let's keep going so we've got voice notes that's interesting I've not actually seen this application before so it's another deep in application I imagine it is version 5.7.6 how does this work then so if we create a notebook we could record with an input mic I only have one mic plugged into not this current computer so we can't test it out but interesting to have a little voice note notebook there All right let's go back into our application launcher so you get cheese the webcam viewer so image viewer will be another deep in application let's go to about so this is deep in image viewer 5.6.1.2 so we have album so I guess this is just like an album library program and this is version 5.6.9 and then we have deep in draw I've never actually used deep in draw properly let's uh, let's get a little pencil action there you go look at that what an artist <laughs> let's get rid of that and let's keep moving so that was deep in draw so in office we don't have too much in office actually we have golden dictionary golden dict simple scan manual let's open the manual okay so this just gives you new, um, sort of a little manual for the sort of applications that it has got installed here so we won't worry about that too much let's keep moving and we have document viewer so the files manager so it's the deep in file manager where you have all your rounded corners like all the other deep in applications will have and then again you can change it into the dark or light theme one by one if you wanted to do that you've got some quick directory links there for your home folders then you've got your disks and then you have your sort of left side panel of other places that you can jump to including more disks and your recycling bin so let's close that now um, so we have the terminal we've had a look at that computer just opens up your yeah so it just opens up sort of files in the computer directory we have trash we have control center we'll have a look at that um, in a moment so it's got its own little system monitor here so that's what we've got running there at the moment and we're currently using two gig of RAM and it's using nothing of the swap let's leave that open while we just keep having a little look around so that's system one we have a boot maker we have a device manager log viewer printer manager archive manager package installer let's take a look at this so drag a dev package here should we try it let's grab a dev package and see how this works what we'll do is we'll just grab the discord deb and by the way if you want to join the discord channel i'll leave the link in the description and you can come and join the discord channel server so if you download a dot deb there and then we're going to drag and drop that into that application which is called what do they call it so i think they just call it package manager don't they package installer okay so we're going to keep 
so let's navigate to our downloads folder so where are we downloads and there's discord.deb and we're going to drag that in there and we're going to click install huh you can only install deb packages in developer mode it's a bit strange all right i'll tell you what let's um let's open it in terminal and just install it with apt Uh, because it's the only thing in the folder, we just do a star. Type in our password. Cool, that's going to install the program and grab the dependencies that we need. So that was package installer. We have an archive manager. Comes with Gparted as well to manage your disks. We have a welcome screen, which is just the deep in one. Can we get rid of that? And it will let you choose what mode you want to be in straight from there. So we have efficient and normal, and then it will let you choose the icon themes, which comes out of the box with Bloom, Bloom Classic, Dark, Bloom, or Boom Classic. Interesting, okay, let's keep moving. And then what these look like to me is just web links using Chrome to wrap around. So we're gonna have a calendar web link for Chrome, and then it will be the same for things like YouTube, and Vozin is their forum. We found that out in the last video. So we won't worry about that too much. And then the last one is Zalo, which is like some sort of chat client, I do believe. Do you know what I haven't seen is an app store or anything like that. Okay, so it doesn't appear to come with a software store out of the box. In fact, it doesn't appear to come with too much packages at all, really. So it's quite a light installation, this one. It is rather strange. Okay, let's leave it like that for now and let's go into the other mode. So that's efficient mode where it will give you a full panel now and then it will move these from the middle to the left and then it will change that <clears throat> and you can still hide them with that little arrow though so that's pretty cool and you have a show desktop button now there so here is the control center where we can manage our updates so if you go into here let's see if it'll find any updates for us i don't think it will because we've already checked for the updates in the terminal so it probably won't find anything in that we have deep in 20 beta there just to remind us of what we're using and we can also go for display default applications personalization we'll have a look at the personalization in a moment so it's giving us a fail to update so we can clear the package cache here get notifications and auto download updates so that's set to auto and here is your power and stuff so if we go into the personalization now and as you can see, you get your three themes that you can choose from light, auto or dark. So auto should really change to dark because it is late, but it's not doing it. Let's check out the dark version. So I think the dark's much nicer, isn't it? And then you can set the transparency to like nothing. So if we do that now, it's a lot more transparent. And then we can change the accent color as well. Let's try, let's do that. Hmm, let's try, let's try this one. That's pretty cool, I like that. Okay, let's see if we get window split. We do, we have window split. Do we have a four-way split? No four-way split for Tyler, no four-way split. Let's try with a different application. Let's try it with files. There we go, so we get a four-way split with some windows, but not all. And then we'll just have one more little look at the general settings here. So that's the boot manager. You can change things in the boot manager, it seems. Keyboard and language and your mouse. Okay, let's just see what the other icons are. I don't know if it showed us all of them. Ah, so it also has Papyrus icon theme as well. Right, what we're going to do is do a reboot and just get a RAM reading, and I think we're going to wrap it up there. Another sort of quite an interesting spin of Ubuntu. What I'm quite confused about, though, is the fact that there is no software store. I would have thought they would have had one of those out of the box. But not to worry, we're going to do a quick reboot, and then we'll come back, check the RAM, and we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up there. And we are back. Let's just log in very quickly. And then the first thing we're going to do is just jump into the system monitor and then see what the RAM is on that. I haven't installed HTOP, so we'll just use their system monitor. So we are using RAM wise course cool, quite high, isn't it? 1.6 gig. I would have thought it would have been a lot lighter than that considering the lack of packages to be honest with you that's a lot higher than what I would have thought it would have been in fact I'm quite surprised by that hmm it's quite interesting just want to check the office just to see if there is any extra office stuff that we didn't have a look at does it have a text editor 
it does it's not using the deep in one though that looks like it is get it or gedit let's have a look so it's using get it as its text text editor I do believe the screen has crashed one second bear with me should be back in a moment bang right so what you didn't see was that the ram was reading at about 1.6 gig at boot and we did just check that the text editor we're using is get it so i'm just going to open the system monitor again just to show you obviously it'll be a bit bigger now because we've opened up get it so it's the same basically as you can see we're using quite a lot of ram i wouldn't have thought it would use that much but there you go anyway that's ubuntu vn their deep in version thank you for watching if you've enjoyed the video please subscribe and i'll see you on the next one Bye bye